Hey everybody and welcome back to Dude's Brunch, a podcast about pop culture, internet garbage, and black coffee. I'm your host, Taylor Olmstead, and with me, it's Tyler Reed. Tyler, what did you have for brunch today? Hey gang. Today for brunch, uh, I've decided that I'm going to have less bread and maybe attempt Whole30? Maybe? That's ambitious. Now what I'm about to say, now I'm, I'm saying this out loud, this specifically isn't Whole30, but it's in the spirit of it. So I had a, a veggie quiche. What's that? I know. Which had broccoli, a, uh, artichoke, sun-dried tomato, and Asiago cheese in it. And then I had a side of bacon, and I had a side of peanut butter, and a banana. And I used that peanut butter on the banana, not on the quiche or the bacon. <laughs> I mean, peanut butter and bacon go well together, but I'm pretty sure you broke all sorts of Whole30 rules in there. You're absolutely right, which is why I, I, I clarified, I want to do it, but this is my like in-between where I'm just like, I just don't specifically don't want to have a lot of bread. I just can't imagine 30 days without cheese. I think I might die. The secret is avocado. That's not even the same thing. They're both equally delicious, and for you to pick is like deciding which one of your children you like better. Sean Evans is here. Sean, what did you have for brunch today? It's also hummus. You can do that too. That's just totally wrong. <laughs> Sean, what did you eat today? <laughs> <laughs> today I had, oh, I had um, the peanut butter and chocolate um, oh, Cheerios. It's like six months strong on these peanut butter and chocolate Cheerios. How many boxes did you buy? I haven't had these in a while. They've kind of been like sitting on top of the refrigerator in like an air sealed container. But I and I knew I had to do this. So last week I went to the store and I got lactate free milk. Because I'd never had that before. Are lactose free? Lactate free. Lactose, right? We got sure, it. whatever. Okay. And I didn't realize this, but it, it this milk without the stuff in it lasts for like three months like of course you should drink it once you open it but like it lasts forever wow it might actually outlast your peanut butter and chocolate cheerios and it doesn't smell sour which is i actually kind of like that this is changing sean's whole brunch game i still don't want to have milk on a regular basis at all but gotta get into those nut milks those almond milks and soy milks no, and things. i'm over that oh yeah nut milks where it's at <laughs> Oh, oh my god, welcome to 2008, guys. Ah, <laughs> oh, not mal. I mean it! <laughs> Let's move on. Tess Stevens is here. Tess, what did you have for brunch today? Oh, well, uh, I'm getting over a sinus infection, uh, one that I've had for about a month, uh, and I finally went to the doctor, so I had some uh, amoxicillin and uh, a couple of vitamins and some... Um, prescription grade uh nasal spray uh and a couple of bottles of water it's been a lovely day and i can breathe again so <laughs> it's it was a good good brunch for me <laughs> maybe not as traditional brunch but i'm glad that it's effective and you're following your bliss yes thank you <laughs> If, if anything, I am definitely doing that. <laughs> well, like I said at the top of the show, I'm your host, Taylor. And for brunch this morning, I had Lucky Charms and coffee. I ran out of eggs on Saturday this week. And can I just say, it's a really sad day when you run out of eggs on Saturday and you know that Sunday is coming and you're not going to have eggs to make. These are my struggles, y'all. I just really wanted an omelet today, but it was not in the cards. Oh my god, you are so pathetic. <laughs> what? <God. laughs> Oh, what can oh, I say? Wow. What can I say, Sean? I, I'm a sad, sad boy. So we're recording this podcast uh, at 8.50 on Sunday, January 28th, and the Grammys have been on for about an hour. Do any of us care? No. I, I care that Lady Gaga got robbed um, by Ed Sheeran. It's not fair, and I don't appreciate it. His music's not even that good, and his guitar's too little. Play a full-size guitar. You're a full-size man. Play a full-size guitar. You know what? You're right. She plays a full-size guitar now, um, and I think uh, that's why she should have won, uh, especially because his guitar is so small. Screw him and his small guitar. <laughs> the Grammys might as well be a guitar measuring contest at this point because they literally mean nothing. They do. They do literally mean nothing. Uh, I liked that Childish Gambino won a, uh, a Grammy. I thought that was good. His album was one of the best of the year. Uh, and that's all I have to say. I just briefly looked at it. I have not been watching, but um, yeah, 
Honestly, the only thing I want to see is uh, Kendrick Lamar, Dave Chappelle, and U2 performing together as the opening act. That just seems so crazy to me. So I'll yeah. probably watch that tomorrow morning. I think I think it's way better to just go on YouTube and watch it after the fact because of all the commercials and uh, all the disappointing stuff that happens between the performances that might or might not be good. So yeah, that's kind of where I am at with that. I saw a commercial this morning that said that the thing said that you would never be able to see it again and it kind of left it at that. I don't know if it's because like you're going to be able to see it live again or if it's because I felt like the way that they kind of said it was like you're not going to be able to rewatch this. Hmm. That's an interesting tactic. Like they were going to like kind of trample it on the internet. You can watch anywhere. I don't know if this is true. I didn't want to investigate that, but I was like, well, okay, so if I can't watch the internet, good, then I'll just read what it was about anyway, like I normally would. Yeah, it's interesting. Now that I've accepted that the actual awards of the Grammys mean nothing, I honestly am kind of more interested in all the other music shows because I feel like they have better performances. Like, at the AMAs this year, they hung pink off the side of a building. That's amazing. The Grammys yeah. would never do that sort of thing. I think that the Grammys have to be the most archaic and traditional of all of the award <laughs> shows, uh, just because they're like the Oscars of music. Um, so they have like some sort of weird, you know, classic, oh, we're going to put two unexpected artists together. Remember when like uh, Elton John and Eminem performed together and everyone was like, whoa, oh my God, oh my God, that is so crazy. That's like... <laughs> when the Grammys were at their height. And I feel like now it's just kind of like, oh yeah, let's throw Dave Chappelle and you two together. No one understands why. So I, think, uh, I think I'm good. It's because they're old white people. Yeah, no, you... you're so right. Why are you whispering? whispering? <laughs> I don't know. Are, are you talking about the performers? Or are you talking about the people that run the Grammys? The people who run the Grammys. They're like... Who the fuck is Kendrick Lamar? What's SoundCloud? Oh my What's God. SoundCloud? What the fuck's a little pup? <laughs> I can't wait for the Christina Aguilera mumblecore song next year. That's really what's going to get me going. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> quick, quick lightning round. Uh, ideal 2019 Grammys performance. I want um, Martha Stewart to be cooking, just like not connected to anybody or anything, and then also Kanye West rapping, but they don't interact with each other at all, and it's never explained. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> See? Yeah. <laughs> Get behind that. <laughs> what if just neither of them played music, and then Kanye was just eating a hamburger? See, there are so many options here, guys. We could literally, we could take this to the moon, take it to the stars. Um, and that was a Kanye West pun. You're all welcome for that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I want there to be a reoccurring segment next year where DJ Khaled just goes behind people after they get their awards and he just screams, we are the best music. And just like every single time anybody does anything, you have to hear him yell that because he's so annoying and he can't like his music isn't even that good. And he's DJ Khaled because, well, I mean, you can't not listen to what he calls his music without hearing him. He scream his own name after it. Sean, did you just explain your own joke? No. Was the explanation the joke? <laughs> no. Okay. He's more just That's... offering commentary on DJ Khaled as a concept. Oh, I see. Yeah, it would be like every week if I was like, this is Sean, and we're the best podcast. You don't see, do it doesn't that? have that same effect because it's dumb. Because you're like, you know what? That's dumb. I was That's under the impression dumb, you do it on every podcast. Actually, every episode, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you say that. Taylor, do you cut that out? I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> Uh, now, what I want, I want somebody to come out and give a lifetime Pitbull award to Pitbull <laughs> for being the most Pitbull. Because I feel being like if the we most just serial killer looking, <laughs> if we just acknowledge Pitbull uh. for what he is, maybe he will go away. <laughs> It'll be it's like a farewell speech for Pitbull. Maybe he gets yeah, to do yeah. a number where he just comes out and yells Pitbull a bunch. <laughs> And then 
we never see him again. Yeah, but if we look at him, you know, he might he might stick around. There's like the, you, he could either go away forever, or he could either be like, oh yeah, people are finally actually looking at me. Now I must continue my legacy of terrifying young children and screaming in Spanish. I don't know. He scares me deeply. <laughs> I I think there should be an award for best artist with a thing on their head, and it's between <laughs> Dead Mouse. Uh, bucket head, <laughs> slip knot, <laughs> and, and Daft Punk, I guess. <laughs> it's a very EDM centric uh, mm-hmm. category, a very electronic oh based, God. based award. <laughs> I don't mind that. Is there a, a category for best live performance? Uh, no. Okay. Why not? I, there might be a category for best tour. Yeah, I think there is for like best tour design or something. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hi. Well, tour design and tour is different. Yeah, they've got a bunch of uh, technical awards, but I'm not. I'm not sure if, you know, that's an interesting question. I don't. I I don't recall. Do you think, um, the the all the the all the associated juggle acts would work would would be evolved in the category of things with on their head? Would, would we say that? Would, would do they count or do they? Does face paint count for this category? I'm going to go with the object or sculpture must be on top of your head rather than in front of your face because then you could have a different category. Like the dude from Slipknot might be in the things on your face category rather than the things on your head category. Oh, you You know know what I forgot? I forgot Guar. You're all about yeah. Pandora's box here. <laughs> with, yeah, I mean, with all of these Gwar would, things. Gwar would own the category of most most blood cannons per square inch of concert <laughs> right. venue. It would. I mean, uh, is there even is there even a contest after that? Like you're I, you're pretty much done right there. I mean, but I, I think I think you would. S- you <laughs> you might you might like inspire an entire industry of people that are going after you know like going after the blood cannon Grammy. Like even genres that you wouldn't think, you know, like like mumblecore. Oh, uh, I was th- I was thinking Enya. It's a big poetic Ooh, statement. Oh, that would be hilarious. Enya and Erica Badu do a mumblecore <laughs> blood cannon fiesta at the Grammys. <laughs> Sounds really really great and possibly award winning if there were an award for that. <laughs> yeah, if there were an award, they would win it. <laughs> yeah, they would. Speaking of awards, this week I came to the brunch and I wanted to talk about a couple of videos that I found on College Humor, which is a website that you probably haven't heard since the Grammys were relevant, and talk about the sad boy and sad girl personality types or lifestyles. I think lifestyle is the better term. Because lifestyles? All right. Because I feel like at one point in time, I was definitely a sad boy. I don't know about everybody else here. Maybe you were good enough to like get around these. Or maybe you still are one. Or maybe you, I don't know. Maybe you were a little bit of, of both or something. I don't know. But that's what I wanted to explore today. Can you give the listeners a picture, maybe from the video, of what a sad girl or a sad boy is? I don't want to out somebody who's a sad boy or sad girl and doesn't know it. Like I don't. No, just use one of the examples <laughs> from the video. Like, okay, so what is a sad boy? A sad boy is somebody, a guy who lives in a house or an apartment, and they usually have, you know, it's it's pretty sad looking. Like, generally, dishes are undone. The place is pretty dirty. Like, stuff is just hanging on the walls. There's probably a pile of clothing in the corner. Like, the only time that there's actually any cleaning done is when they go to their parents to do laundry. But on the on the bright side, they do have a good entertainment system and that entertainment system is to quote the video fire (laughs) (laughs) now a sad girl is a girl who lives in an apartment and seems to struggle with alcohol i guess there is also there was a guy like you have like whiskey bottle or old bottles everywhere but um girls it just it kind of doesn't seem like it's just stuff half empty like half empty sugar packets on the counter, half empty wine bottles in the refrigerator, postcards on the wall, like hair in the shower, bras laying everywhere. I don't know because I honestly have never been to a sad girl apartment that I am aware of. So, but yeah, I've definitely lived in slash <laughs> been to a lot of sad boy places. So, 
that's a more familiar idea. Um, so my first question is, are you or have you ever been a sad boy or a sad girl? <laughs> I guess I'll start as the only <laughs> girl in this situation. Um, I have like a bizarre extreme attention to my domicile. Like I like to keep my things correct and I like to surround myself with stuff that makes me happy so that I do not become sad because I'm very predisposed to like depression and things like that. So all of my living spaces have always been kind of like curated to the nines and I'm really into interior design and things like that. So I will have to say I personally have never had a sad girl apartment, but I have lived in a house in college with people who kept the sad girl slash boy lifestyle going outside of my room, which was tough to deal with because then you kind of start adopting it yourself um, and it kind of leaks into your your area and, and those, you know, whatever half drunk beers and open containers of things and shampoo bottles that you never throw away or kind of just like, you know, they're coming in to your area. But yeah, I, I can honestly, and not just, not just to, to make myself look different, but I always usually have my, my, uh, my home correct. If, if not a little bit messy, but but correct. Well, I feel like I I want to be in Tess's shoes, right? I want to say that it was just my roommates who were living in a sad boy house. <laughs> but <laughs> but let's be real. Um, my first non-dorm room college living situation was living in a 100-year-old five-bedroom house with four other guys. That was a sad boy house. And we had a taxidermy bobcat over the TV and the dishes we used were just the dishes that had been left in the house from the previous occupants, along with the sofas. I'm pretty sure the dining room table was also just left there. There was a stop sign hung up on the wall. Somebody had a papa son chair for seemingly no reason that we like put right in the center of the living room. The whole house was right up against a very busy road on both sides and so trucks would go by and the whole building would shake and our cable would go out if a big enough truck drove by <laughs> you guys had like a cellar basement that was really freaky where there was like spiders everywhere and a gravel floor yeah that place did have that creepy cellar basement I'm trying to think oh, what else man. there was always like fly paper being hung up all over the place because there was gnats everywhere Oh, yeah, the Athens gnats. Oh, those things mm. suck. The fruit flies. Ugh, bad, bad, bad. Yeah, yeah, Sean visited me in my sad boy house. Um, I don't know why he kept coming over, <laughs> if we're being honest. Because <laughs> Wilson made food. <laughs> yeah, true sad boy lifestyle. You go wherever somebody else is cooking food. And we could, and I could walk home, because it was really close to where I live, so we could go over to your house and play Cards Against Humanity and get really drunk. And then I knew that I didn't have to sleep around your sad boy stuff. So I could just go back to my own place. <laughs> oh. uh, and then in my next apartment, it it wasn't a sad boy, but I did inherit a piece of, of Sean's sad boy lifestyle, which I guess will be a good segue. Uh, I inherited a couch from Sean, but it didn't have any legs. Oh, you took the, I, you took the brown couch. Yeah, his exact words when he gave me this couch were, just put a few bricks under it. For God's sake. Well. <laughs> and so it had bricks under all four corners, and that's how we kept the couch up. Oh, my God. I don't know what happened to the legs on that couch, but someone asked me about that, like, not so long ago. They were like, what, whatever happened to those couches? Those were good couches. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, this couch just sucks. As far as I know, it's still in that apartment. I hate those couches. Go ahead, Sean. Tell us. About your sad boy living situation. Oh, man. Um, probably my most sad boy place I ever lived was my junior year when we had a townhouse. And it was it was literally like this video, like posters on the wall, like rotting ramen in the trash can, like dishes in the sink piled up pretty much even with the countertop. And then it would just be done as it got full. Um, like we had... Everybody came in every single door. There was like three doors in this place and no one, we didn't come in just one. Everyone came in every single different door, depending on like where you had to go. Um, Which of course meant that there was mud tracked everywhere, I'm sure. 
Oh yeah, it was god awful. And we had like old canvas housing furniture. So it was like stuff that was like ripped open and all kinds of stuff. For a long time when we had all this extra room that we didn't know what to do with, so we were looking to get a ping pong table to put it and we looked all over Craigslist to find a ping pong table. It was really bad. It was really bad. Um God, it was bad. <laughs> But then after that, after that, it just it got progressively better. So, excuse me. The posters came down after that. When I went to graduate school, there was basically maybe two or three posters that went up on the wall that had things like that were just posters. They weren't actually just like they didn't show anything. They were just posters because I hated having bare walls. Um. <laughs> but you couldn't put anything in frames because you couldn't put nails in the wall. Right. So and I don't know. I, and two, I my senior year, I moved into this apartment that was in this building that was like really old from like the 1800s. So basically you just like couldn't, you basically couldn't do anything in there. But I did have a sheet as a curtain over the window. It was just like an extra long bed sheet from (laughs) freshman year as I wasn't going to buy curtains. So I just like thumbtacked it into the wall with a hammer. Um, (laughs) It was pretty pathetic. What about you, Tyler? Are you, have you, or are you living the sad boy lifestyle? I mean, I don't think I'm specifically living a, a, the sad boy life in this in the way that the video portrays it, but I'm living in a, in a distinctly different sad boy house in that <laughs> um, in order to use the microwave in our apartment, you have to make sure that the, 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 the switch that turns on the dishwasher isn't on. And also there's like a light switch or there's like a plug on the other side of the room that like, if there's something plugged into it, it'll short the like air, like all the power will just like turn off. <laughs> and so like, there's a light, like a, like a white switch here. And, like, normally you're like, okay, so obviously it goes to the plug that's nearest it, right? No, it's, like, on the middle of the fucking room. So it's, like, I have to have, like, an extension cord that goes, like, halfway across. Like, you can see it. There it is. There it is. It's right here. And then it goes over here. Um, <laughs> and it's just, like, everything in this house is just just fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, like, there's also small things like I I just don't have tongs, you know, <laughs> like for some reason, every time I cook something, Catherine's always like, where's your tongs? I'm like, I don't, I don't have any, Catherine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to disappoint you again. <laughs> I just use two, he, he just uses two forks like chopsticks. I just use and literally just... anything else. I just use like a spoon <laughs> or like a big, we have like a, a billion fucking ladles. We have so <laughs> many likes, like, oh. Oh, the big plastic spoon. We got those. <laughs> Tyler lives in a soup kitchen. <laughs> I, I do. Clearly. There's so, so- <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> I'm just picturing you struggling with, with so many ladles and no tongs. It's like maybe you could make tongs out of... We could duct tape them together. Yeah, like with a rubber band or something. <laughs> now I'm just imagining him like trying to flip a hot dog with two ladles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I forgot the worst part. So the fi- the fire alarm, oh, the, like the the it's it's like it's like right right next to everything, and so like if you if you make pasta a little too hot, if it gets a little too steamy, it just goes off all the time. It's like you pull something out of the oven real quick, boop boop boop. I'm like fuck. So like I was like. Early on, I tried to cook things, you know, just a little after my roommate went to bed. And of course, it just goes off. And, and he's like, what the, f- what the fuck? I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't, I just want to cook some Indian food that I can prepare for the rest of the week. <laughs> oh, what my God. You know, bringing up kitchen stuff. Like in San Francisco, there's this concept of in-law apartments, which is what I live in right now with, it's a 500 square foot apartment with three girls living in it. So really, really tight quarters. And I pay an amount of money for it that would blow your fucking mind. But basically we don't have, so this is where, this is where I have like, like sad girl moments because everything's decorated really nicely and everything looks really good, but we don't have a fucking stove. 
Like, we don't have a stove. <laughs> so I bought this teeny tiny little, like, toaster oven that has a coffee maker built into it and a little uh, a skillet on the top. It's really cute. But the first time I used it, it almost set the entire apartment on fire. So I'm trying to, you know, and I don't really cook. The last time I had a full kitchen was when I lived in San Jose and I put shoes in my oven. Like I stored them in there. I didn't use my oven anyway. So I'm like, oh, I don't need an oven. Like I don't cook, whatever. But now it's like my roommates, they want to cook. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, everybody's trying to cook and there's no oven. So that's sort of like where, plus I don't have a bathtub and I'd really love a bathtub because every girl likes putting those stupid bath bombs in the damn bathtub and just sitting in the bathtub and I can't do that either. So I pay probably triple. I probably pay what all of you pay put together for this tiny little fucking space with no oven and no bathtub and the girls upstairs there's a unit upstairs right they control the heat so most of the time it's not all of the time i'm freezing my ass off or i'm sweltering and i have to open the window and there's sirens going off and shit and you can't sleep and so that i have to say it's like kind of like putting paper over cracks it's like it's not plaster it's just kind of like okay it looks cute so it's fine but i have to tell you now that now that you've brought up the kitchen and uh, other functional spaces i'm much more fashion over function it's kind of how my apartment is and that's a little sad to me yeah um regular listeners of the show I, actually i don't know if i've ever left it in i've probably cut it out because it frustrates me so uh, but my current apartment, which I'm moving out of uh, at the end of next month, sits right up against the train tracks. Oh, dear God. And my window is 10 feet from the train. So we will be in the middle of recording the podcast and just have to stop for like 25 minutes because a train goes by. <laughs> and I'm so over it. <laughs> the first night it happened, it like shook the windows and I thought I was going to die. <laughs> you thought the train was coming into your apartment. Oh, God. <laughs> Like, if a train derailed, I think it would probably kill everyone who lives in my building. That's comforting. <laughs> That's funny. I hear helicopters go over my apartment all the time. If the president decides that he wants to go from the White House to Andrews, the helicopter flies right by my house really close and wakes everybody up. Oh, yeah, and in the morning, if there's a funeral over at Arlington Cemetery, I get to hear the gunfire. Oh, dear. So if that doesn't set a bad tone for the rest of your day. Good morning. One of America's heroes is being laid to rest. I hope you have a lovely day. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, man. That's a bummer. Suddenly, a... I, I don't feel so bad about not having a stove. <laughs> no, oh, I no, still you do. Should, you should I feel bad do. about not having a stove. That is, like, that is a real problem. Not going to disclose exactly how much I pay, but it's well over $1,000 a month. Just, just for your room? Uh, yeah, and uh, I have to pay $100 to park in my own garage uh, because technically it belongs to the unit upstairs. So, yeah. If you ever have the opportunity to move to San Francisco and you're like, oh, it's so cute. There's so much going on. Oh, it's going to be like, great. Nope. No, don't do it. Do not do it. You will. You will. Your paycheck will be gone before you see it. But it's a learning experience. We've all talked about current and past uh, sad boy, sad girl housing situations. I'm curious what Tess talked a little bit about um, ways that she gets around the sad girl problem by making her space look and feel nice. Does everybody else have their like anti sad boy, anti sad girl repellent things in their home? Mm -hmm. Because I feel like I certainly do in mine. Okay, go for it. You can start this one. Sure. For me, um, anything that's hung on the walls in our place is framed. We have, a, we have a pretty good amount of art around the apartment, and it's all in frames, which I'm very adamant about because I feel like when it talked in the video about like posters held up with tape, it just reminds me so strongly of like my freshman dorm room that I just can't handle it. <laughs> So all art on the walls is in frames. And then we have a surprisingly nice set of dishes, which I feel pretty good about because we do have people over a good bit. And so it's nice to be able to like have food and have it, you know, presented on things other than paper plates, <laughs> which I feel like is how I lived through most of college in my sad boy housing. So, you know, it's those little details like that that make me feel like maybe I live in an in a real adult home. Mm -hmm. See, I, my solution to this one was I live with my girlfriend 
and she is all she is a human. So she wants to live how other humans live. Um, so we've been we've been getting through that. We've been uh, we've been finding compromise for the, all the better and none of the worst. But I do still have like a sad boy streak, and I I was thinking about on it. We kind of had like a little talk about it today. Um, I know that we never talked about this on the podcast, but I actually hate hand washing dishes. I I totally dislike it. I. We, we went to an apartment we were looking for an apartment and it didn't have a dishwasher. It was a total deal breaker. I do not want to do that. I do not want to hand wash dishes. I do not want to like, I, I just can't do it. And she said, well, would you like hand wash some of this Tupperware? No, it goes, <laughs> it goes inside of the washing machine. Like, and she was, she said, well, can we, can we like fill it up and then run it? And which she's right. You should. You should like try and fill it up before you run it. You shouldn't just run it with only five or six things in there. But I insisted that it didn't matter and we should just do a light load. Well, how I justified it was calling it a light load and just <laughs> putting it only a few dishes in there, running the dishwasher and then emptying it after that because I didn't want to hand wash the other dishes that were there. And looking back now, I, I know that this is like a really lazy thing for me to do. And the, I understand that this is true because the only dish that I own personally that I brought to this relationship that is hand wash is my pizza stone. <laughs> <laughs> the sad boyest of dishes. I mean, it's like oh, it's man. like a pretentious. It's a pretentious dish to have. It but really the is. The fact that it's your only dish makes it that much worse. <laughs> because, because it's not like you've got like a, like a popcorn bowl. Like, okay, I, I see that. I get it. Or like a coffee mug that you love. It's like it's a pizza stone. So not only <laughs> are you a hipster, but... <laughs> You're you don't you're not you're not totally in touch with like the faculties of what belongs in the kitchen, which is super funny to me because I totally have things like that. Like I have a cheese board and like not a lot of plates. I'm it's marble and it's beautiful, like and I love it. But like fuck, man, I don't have like a lot of other stuff. So when it comes time to do anything that doesn't involve artisanal cheeses, I'm kind of out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing charcuterie is in you, right now. Do you like? Do you have you thought about other purposes for it, like putting it in the freezer and then putting some cream on it and kind of doing like ice cream rolls or something? Oh, you know that sounds really good. Maybe I'll try that. But let's be honest, I'm not that in, like I'm not that invested in cooking in any way. So <laughs> I think that the best the best I can do pretty much is is put together a pretty banging cheese plate and some wine. That's my thing. There you go. It. Yeah. But I, I get you. I get you with the pizza stone. I guess my, my cheese board is like like your pizza stone. I see Sean's pizza stone, and I raise him two pizza stones <laughs> and a meat fork. Oh, dear God. <laughs> In our household, we have a small pizza stone and a large pizza stone. And then we have a meat fork, which we use to pull the pizza out of the oven and place onto a surface for cutting we don't ever use the meat fork for meats it is purely to remove pizzas from ovens and place them on cutting boards because <laughs> we're classy like that see guys i don't see anything wrong with any of this i think we're innovators <laughs> i think we're really <laughs> disrupting, disrupting the market here <laughs> we're giving away all of our secrets <laughs> tyler what's your uh grown-up thing in your sad boy apartment Hey gang, you already know what it is. It's called my coffee, like, <laughs> cabinet. <laughs> Tyler's commitment to coffee is on another level. Which is a burr grinder. It's a Chemex. It's a, a Hario V60. It's a Kalita Wave. It's now two scales. A little standy so I can put all my stuff. I got my decanter to put my drink in to then put into my cup. And my gooseneck kettle with that's temperature controlled. Mm. <laughs> Are you run, running a moderately sized coffee shop out of your home? No. Basically. <laughs> I'm just an <laughs> avid collector. Okay, all right. Just want to make sure your codes are up to snuff and that you won't get You, you want know, to come paid. over to my house for coffee? I, I would. It sounds like you've got everything anyone could ever want. So, 
The only problem is you can never drink the coffee hot. In Tyler's household, it's iced coffee or die. Now, I don't know if you all have seen my recent tweet, but I had an enlightening moment where I ordered a hot drink on purpose. And I was like, I think I've changed. Oh, dear. Think, well, to be fair, it was uh, uh, a Cortado. So it was a very small drink and it wasn't like Inferno hot. So I could just drink it right away. And I was like, this is great. This is exactly what I wanted. Because that's my biggest, my biggest beef with hot drink is it's like, ah, oh, my tongue. Oh. <laughs> and you got to go around the, the whole day like that. And you're like, well, I wish I could taste things, but I can't. I can't because I burnt my tongue the first sip of coffee I had. This is, this is the most telling part of Tyler's sad boyness right here. It's that Tyler cannot wait for food. You're right. Ooh. Oh, you're right. I will burn the shit out of my everything. <laughs> I don't wait. <laughs> uh, Sean, I'm curious. Do you and Sarah eat at a table or do you eat on the couch in the living room? No, we... <laughs> Sarah eats at a table 99.9% of the time. I'm probably splitting that 60-40. 60% couch, 40% table. Okay, yeah, I'm about, I would say I'm about 50-50. My roommate is 90-10 couch. <laughs> that 10% is, like, anything so ridiculously messy that you cannot eat it on on the couch. So, like, chicken wings, for example, not couch food. <laughs> I guess we, we do eat dinner at the table, and I eat breakfast at the table, but if I'm having, like, some chips, I'm on the couch. Never in bed anymore, though. I used to eat them in bed, and I stopped. <laughs> I stopped that stuff. <laughs> oh, that's the most sad boy. I don't even bring food in my room anymore. I don't want my room to smell like food. Oops, that's yeah. me right now. <laughs> Whenever, so, so, uh, my boyfriend lives in a suburb that's like out way outside. Well, it's in the East Bay. It's like outside of San Francisco. So he has a lot more space. So he has like a table and a kitchen with an oven and a living room. <laughs> and then his bedroom has an office attached to it. And then there's a second bedroom. So I find it way less way less crowded over there so then i take some of my things that i feel like make my apartment a sad girl apartment and i bring them over to his house and i make his house a sad girl apartment and it seems like he doesn't mind but i don't know his thing is that like sephora is to me as bevmo is to him he buys different kinds of artisanal beer every time we go there even if we have 20 bottles of it like at the house he's like no but this one this one's different. It's like, this one's got this in it and this in it and this in it. And I'm like, no, this one has glitter in it, but the glitter's actually pink. And the one I have has green glitter in it. So I have to have this one. And it's like, I don't know if that makes, is if that's like a hobby or that's sad. Because like, is it just, I collect this because I like it? Or does that make me a sad person? I don't know. My that's, entire closet is full of board games. Yeah, so your thing is board games. Ta Taylor, what is your thing? Taylor has no the thing? excess. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> no, that's not true. Um, I still have a pretty good size record collection. I've pared it down a little bit because records are hard to move. Mm -hmm. They're heavy. But I have, I have a lot. How many are we talking, Taylor? Over 100. Oh, <laughs> okay. I mean, that's not, I mean, have you had to like upgrade your shelving for that? Mm-hmm. I have. How many times? I had to buy permanent shelving and stop using crates like a sad boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that responsible. was one of the changes I made when I moved into this apartment. Yeah, every time you move, you kind of upgrade a little bit. I've noticed. At least you that's what I've tried to do. That's a really good point, Tess. What's everybody's next, like, non-sad boy, sad girl upgrade that you're itching to make? Well, I'm probably going to move in with my boyfriend this year, which means I'll have to be paring down some things. Unless I get both closets, which I might. So, I'm kind of looking... I'm looking to, to, to minimalize, I think. That's my next upgrade, is kind of like looking around and seeing what actually I need and what I don't. Because I still have quite a few things from like like clothing-wise from like college that I'd never wear anymore. I need to just like let go of some stuff. And being in such a small space, it feels like I have a lot more stuff than I actually do. But especially, I mean, 
Sean, you probably experienced this, like moving in with somebody. It's like, that's their stuff and your stuff now. So yeah. you've got triple the, the, the stuff to go through. So hopefully, uh, yeah, my next upgrade will be, uh, moving forward and getting rid of some things. I think that's, that's exactly what we're working on right now too. We moved in together like full time. We have two people's worth of stuff inside of one apartment. So we're slowly kind of like getting rid of this and okay, so we should get this. And uh, right now we're looking for a, a better lamp for uh, like next to the, the desks because we have one that's like, it's not a bad lamp. It's just not like, it's just a lamp. It's, it's just black and has these like condescent or these like fluorescent lights on it. It's, it's not, it's not nice. So we've been looking for that or like we like we, we just we just upgraded cutting boards. We had these like really flimsy Ikea ones. And now we have this really nice one that's like thick and that like will keep all the liquids on the board instead of like cutting something. And it just spews out all over in every single fucking direction. <sighs> Adulting is hard. When I first made the move to Atlanta, I didn't bring a whole lot of furniture because it's a big cross-country move from Ohio. One of the first things I had to buy when I got to the first place I lived here was a lamp because it was an old house and it didn't have overhead lighting in a couple of the rooms. So I went to Target and I bought a $14 lamp because I needed to be able to see to move in. And that lamp just became our living room lamp for a while until one day my roommate texted me and... Turns out the lamp had been left on and melted into oh, the God. wall. <laughs> oh, God. And so at that point, once we had scraped the lamp off the wall, we decided it was time to stop living like sad boys and buy a real adult lamp. And so I empathize with you, Sean, because lamp shopping sucks. It totally does. Oh, God. It's so much harder than it needs to be because you have no idea how much light you really need. And when you're in like the space of the store where they show all the lamps, they put them all right next to each other. So it's impossible to tell how bright one individual lamp is. I'm super not a fan of lamp shopping. <laughs> I feel your pain. I guess you're not getting your security deposit back. Uh, we got most of the lamp off the wall. There's still a little blue splotch that I think we're just going to paint over. Like I said, it's a little bit sad, boy. I'm concerned um, for your safety now. <laughs> you, I know. Do you right? remember when we were living in Athens and I had that lamp in my room? And it had, uh, I had like one of those architect desk lamps. Mm -hmm. And it had broken. And this other one didn't have like a working side light. So I took a bike tire tube and I wrapped it around the lamp and then wrapped it around the other architect lamp. And then I plugged them both into a socket and used it as one continuous lamp that I could kind of move around and it was. <laughs> it's amazing you didn't burn that building down. But no, my uh, my next sad boy thing is a little bit bittersweet, but I feel like in 2018, it's finally time to get rid of my CDs. What? I don't listen to CDs anymore. <laughs> Mine are at my parents' house. That. I have like 60 or 80 CDs sitting on the shelf behind me that have never been taken out of their cases in the time that I've lived in Georgia. They just need to go somewhere that's not here. I mean, yeah, you don't have a CD player in your car anymore, probably, right? I do, but I don't use it. Mm, yeah. I would, I would say that's good. We have one DVD player in this whole apartment. I think it's time. And you can, uh, you could probably sell them, right? Don't you have something like the exchange out there, probably? Oh, yeah. 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 Make a little money? That's the hope. Who knows? Maybe you'll buy a better lamp with it. <sighs> Is it that's what I do with my books. If I, I take them to the place, if they want them, if they don't, I take them and I put them in, like, the little library that's across the street so people can just take them. Yeah. So then you're not completely wasting your, you know, your stuff. What about you, Tyler? What's your next anti-sad boy move? Hey, I think that my next purchase is probably going to be, like, a couch and a dining room table and a TV and a router and a washing machine and a dryer and <laughs> basically you're just buying a whole apartment right yeah, it kind of sounds like you're buying a home because my roommate had everything already ready to go so oh i'm I, that roommate i got lucky the first time i'm out a first time i'm out on my own and i got i got real lucky so next time we'll i won't 
be so fortunate. It kind of worked out for me. Go ahead. Speaking of roommates, my all my sad boy places, I always had a roommate that had a pretty fire entertainment system. So I never <laughs> had to own a TV until I moved to this apartment and Sarah and I went and got one. But that was something I could count on. I, w- I would bring a couch. They would bring their fire entertainment system. Oh, see, I'm the fire entertainment system guy and my roommate is the couch guy. <laughs> You either have one or the other. I was not bringing that brick couch. Yeah, I guess. I guess. I guess so. Oh, that's really funny. All right, folks. It's time for everybody's favorite segment. This week in internet garbage. And this week, I have a real doozy for the team. Um, do y'all remember, or do you have? an idea of who the 70s band ABBA was slash is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I'm glad. That's really all you need to know going into this. We can all watch this now. Oh dear, there's a demonic child. You can dab. You can dab. Having the dab of your life. Ooh, is he that My ears. Watch that dab. Alright, I'm not finishing this. <laughs> so, uh, that was uh, The Dabbing Queen by Dabba, which is a video uh, created by two kids. Their channel is called Turbocharged Milk. Um, this, mo- this video was released last June and has as of recording 6,700 views and basically what they've done is they've just taken every noun and verb in Dancing Queen and made it dab so you are the dabbing queen young and sweet only dabbing Friday night and the dabs are low Um, when you hear the dab music you get the idea so I guess my first question for all of you is um, how do you feel after hearing that dab music are you in the mood for a dab? <sighs> I uh, I personally appreciated how uh, how many angles there were, like how how many different setups there were for filming. I think that they used their location well, and that they persevered through the rain because it was clearly raining while they were filming that. And I think that that is a um, a testament to the Danish fortitude that they have, or wherever they're from, the Netherlands possibly. Um, but no, it's going to be a no from me, dog, on the song. I did not find any redeeming qualities about it, and I would rather listen to It's Everyday Bro by Jake Paul over and over again than um, listen to that. So that's where I rest my case, but I do appreciate their uh, their commitment uh, to filming that in the rain. That was that was great. Good for them. This was This was a savage video. I just... <laughs> This, you could even say these kids are mavericks. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know what? Frankly, they get a 0 out of 10 for not saying anything about their merch products. You know, <laughs> how, how can you not wrap your merch when you're just talking about that dab life, you know? Dab it on them haters. Are you saying that you would buy a dabbing queen snapback? Uh, I'm not saying I wouldn't n- not. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, they they just they just just take it off his clothes. That's so it's so weird. I had to, I turned it off there. I had to let it go there. Sean, are you in the mood for a dab? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think that the Grammys next year should highlight this artist. <laughs> They should be the they should be the guest artist with somebody. Um, it really is a pity that they only have like almost seven thousand views. Seems like they've been overlooked by some key agents. So you know, are you trying to say that these kids have a bright future in in making short uh, sequential art in which they will <laughs> do hilarious stunts over over music? Is that what you're trying to say? Oh yeah, probably. It's it's about as bright as a stone inside of a cave. <laughs> Possibly on the the Afrom- uh, the 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 newly released Vine Two, right? <laughs> Vine Two. Yeah, that's the thing that's happening. Um, the thing that struck me the first time I watched this video, and on all of my repeat viewings, which have been more <laughs> than I would like to mention. Dear God. 
um, is that it's so true to like every middle school everything where the kid on the right is so obviously super into this and the kid on the left is just not like he's already mad that he has to wear the flower crown and then he's just like barely dabbing because he just like wants it to be over with and I love that because I feel like I've been that kid where somebody comes up with some dumb idea and then I just have to like do the thing and like half-ass my way through it. So I appreciate his half-hearted dabs. Oh my god. That was, um, that hurt me deeply. And I think that, uh, I think I'm gonna, if I had to choose, I would choose Griffin's Amiibo Corner over that. <laughs> So what you're what saying a specific is reference. <laughs> bore is uh, less scarring than dabbing? I would say yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I have nothing else to say. <laughs> I mean, I, I know I used to make just really horrible tr- internet trash garbage uh, YouTube videos when I was this age. Um, so this, this really did hit me in a soft spot because I feel like this is the sort of thing that I would have done if I was a teenager during the dabbing craze. Uh, I distinctly remember uh, when AIM was a thing, Taylor's profile picture, or also MySpace, was when uh, Panic! at the Disco released uh, 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 f- f- the, the folk album, whatever, the, the Beatles odd. one. And, yeah, pretty odd, God. And Taylor had a giant orange hat, giant orange fuzzy hat, and he took several photos with it. I Do you still have those anymore, Taylor? Oh god, no. They died in the MySpace <laughs> fires of circa Good for 2010. You, Taylor. It's, sounds like Good Janet you. probably has it then. <laughs> I respect that. I respect it. But no, that was the direction I wanted to go with this, Tyler. Um, I feel like this video is going to haunt these poor kids 10 years down the line when they're in college and their college roommate finds out that they are the dabbing queen, young and sweet. Um, does anybody else have any horrible internet trash sins that they would like to confess at this time? Oh my god, everything. <laughs> don't get don't get baited into saying this. Don't get baited into like him finding his like little dirt on you. Because you knew Taylor will. One of Taylor one of Taylor's kinks is clearly finding embarrassing old photos of people and then just making sure everyone knows they exist. Like the one of me eating a, a panda ball. Uh, from a hat uh, in Spencer's Gifts from, like, literally ten years ago. Basically any photo of anyone taken inside of a Spencer's Gifts at any time is, like, perfect blackmail material. Well, that's it. I I just really needed other people to experience this video with me because it's been stuck in my head all week, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be stuck in yours, too. I mean, yeah, I completely understand it. It's just like you're, you know, you're dicking around with your friends. Um, I was probably the kid who would have made the other kid do that, so I, I totally, I totally get it. I mean, it's not caught on video, but I remember performing the choreography from, like, an entire NSYNC tour and making my sister learn it, too, and making our parents, like, sit in the living room and watch us do that. But, you know... At least that's not everywhere. Um, I'm thankful for that. But um, yeah, everybody's probably embarrassed about something. That's part of being a kid. It just so happens that these kids uh, will have to live with that forever. So uh, I pray for them. Looking out for a place to die. All right, and with that, it's Sunday night and. The dabs are low. The dab music has faded into the background, and it's time for a round of shameless plugs from the panel. Um, Tyler, if folks want to dab on you, where can they do that? Please don't dab on me, please. <laughs> you can find my design illustration work at tylerdreed.com, and you can find my socials as TDR Design on Instagram and Twitter. Sean Evans, if somebody made you a flower crown, um, where can they get in touch with you to send it your way? Oh, they can get in touch with me at S Evans eight nine one zero. That's sevens eight nine ten. And Tess, if people have choreography routines uh, that they'd like to share with you, where can they where can they send those? 
Uh, you can send them to me on Twitter at Tess Stevens or Instagram at Tess F. Stevens. And I am recently back on YouTube at youtube.com slash C slash Tess Stevens. So, yeah, send me all your embarrassing stuff. There's nothing Tess loves more than watching you embarrass yourself on the internet so she doesn't have to. Amen. Uh, well, you can find me on the socials as at TC Olmstead. Uh, you can like and follow the show. We are at Dudes Brunch. If you really like what we do here, you can leave a review on iTunes or recommend us on Overcast. And other than that, I guess we'll see you all next week for another episode of Dudes Brunch. Dancing Queen. Dancing Queen. <laughs>